why the pros love and hate forward facing sonar what's going on it's mr bass and i want to put my two cents in on the forward facing sonar argument and i've heard about it for several years now we all have anybody that's uh involved in fishing at all especially if you fish any tournaments or you follow the pro circuits uh, everybody knows that it has been something to watch something to pay attention to and 2023 has really shaken things up for years there's been guys that have complained about it been upset with it you know randy blockett he's probably the most vocal about it everybody knows his position knows he's upset and of course we know there's other guys upset too some make it public known publicly others are a little more quiet about it but a lot of times i think we don't talk enough about the fact that a lot of people love it a lot of guys love it and it has turned the whole tournament world upside down one of the things that's got everybody in a tizzy is this 2023 season has just gone crazy. All of the young guys, rookies, young, less experienced anglers have really dominated the tournament world. And not only that, nearly every pro-level tournament, forward-facing sonar has been a factor in the win or in the top 10 players in the game and there's a ton of excellent very talented anglers who really are being squeezed out because for whatever reason they're not embracing the technology so if you really want to dig into this uh, FFS problem I think first you've got to know what are the keys to victory what are the main things that uh, play really in every tournament that lead to a guy winning and it really doesn't matter if it's a professional tournament local tournament anything in between there are a lot of different factors but i think there are three major factors three common factors that are going to be in every tournament win out there okay it's really important to understand what it takes to win the money in professional fishing and of course there's tons of different reasons but there are three key elements that you've literally got to have in every tournament i believe the first one is finding the fish you've got to be able to locate them you've got to be able to find them the second is you've got to know how to catch the fish and catching the fish is just as important as finding, but if you can't find them, you're not going to catch them. And the third element is it's not bad to have a little luck as well. So in order to hit that money, in order to hit the fame, the fortune, the, the accolades, you need all three. And, you know, finding fish is really pivotal. It's pivotal. So this, it's really, really important to understand these three elements because this really explains why so many guys are upset with forward-facing sonar. All right, so those are the three elements, finding fish, catching fish, and having a little bit of luck. So... Put the pieces together. Why is forward-facing sonar driving the world crazy? It's because it's helping people find and locate fish much easier than it was in the past. Now, here's something else to consider. And this, I think, is the crux of the old-timers argument. The guys who, like Randy, who don't want the technology around, don't want to embrace it. And this has to do with the 10,000-hour rule. What is the 10,000 hour rule? Basically, if you want to become an expert in anything, maybe you want to become a pro golfer or a professional basketball player, a professional violinist, or a professional tournament angler that wins 
and does well, you need to have a lot of experience. The minimum is 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours equals about five solid years of uh, work. 2,000 hours a year, five years, that's 10,000 hours. And that's the minimum. That's the bare minimum to really start to become proficient in any kind of thing. Now, you've also got to have a lot of talent uh, and a lot of desire and a lot of drive. There's a whole lot of things that go into it. But ask a professional angler, what's the number one thing I can do to be great? They're going to say, spend more time on the water. Spend more time on the water. Spend more time on the water. Because every year you're on the water, you're growing, you're learning, you're developing. And Kyle Welcher himself says this. He's got a great video about forward-facing sonar out right now. And uh, where his, he's answering questions mostly from his wife, I believe. And one of the things that she asks him is, you know, do you feel like you would be as successful without the forward-facing sonar? And he said, well, I think I would be successful. But it would be much, much harder, especially in the northern fisheries. Uh, you know, he, he mentioned that the last three tournaments on the elites, St. Clair, Champlain, and St. Lawrence, every single one of his keepers came on forward-facing sonar. And we know every tournament, so the, the, the sonar played. So not only did he say, I really need it to be successful in those types of fisheries, he said the guys like Polinick and, you know, the, the other pros that have much more experience on those fisheries would be in a much greater advantage. And that's why everybody's mad. Because the guys who are not rookies, the guys who don't embrace this technology, they've had years and years of experience. Take someone like Larry Nixon or Gary Klein. These guys who have been in the tournament world 40 some odd years. How many times have they been to Champlain? How many times have they been to the St. Lawrence River? I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of times. And every time they go, they learn more about the fishery. They find other places to find fish and catch fish. And they've got this whole bank of knowledge that, from experience, going back to the 10,000 hour rule, that gives them an edge. Well, guess what? Forward-facing sonar. It just takes the old 10,000 hour rule and just kicks it right out. It gives them a immediate shortcut to be able to cheat the system. That's the way they see it. You're cheating the system. I've had to work my whole career the hard way, and you guys are just getting away with it by using technology. Here's the reality, guys and gals. Technology's not going away. Sonar is going to continue to get better and better and better and better. And the learning curve is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And it's going to feel like cheating more and more and more and more if you're not willing to embrace the technology. Am I saying there shouldn't be limits? No. Am I saying you shouldn't ban it? No, I'm not even saying that. If you want to ban it, ban it. You know, it's not going to affect me at all. Uh, but... It's a little myopic to say that we're going to pretend like this technology doesn't exist. Now you say, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. Anybody can use it if they want. We're just not going to use it in the tournament world. Really? I just don't see it lasting. Now, maybe there are some good ideas out there uh, to li limit it. Maybe you limit it for some fisheries or maybe you limit it certain times of the year. Or maybe you do the old power hour thing they're talking about where maybe cert during certain parts of the tournament day you can use it and then certain times you cannot use it. Uh, there, there are a lot of different things you could bat around and do. But I think it's really important, people, to remember that the young guys, these new kids that are coming in, they're people too. They matter. Their opinions matter. I look at my six-year-old grandson, and that kid can take any piece of technology. It doesn't matter if it's a phone or an iPad or a PlayStation or any technology. He ought to, he duck, duck to water. You know, I mean, it's just straight to it. No big deal. He's in it. He's using it. He's doing it. 
And I'm just like, who taught you this? How did you learn all this? He's like, what do you mean? What, who taught me? Nobody taught me. What, uh, what kids today do is they embrace the tools that give them the results they want. I want to play that awesome game. Well, I, I got to learn. I got to learn the technology. And they don't look at the technology as an obstacle or a hindrance or a problem. It's the vehicle to get them the results. Well, that's all, that's all forward-facing sonar is. It is a vehicle to help anglers get results. And frankly, what's wrong with embracing technology? Look, I'm an old guy. I get it. I hate technology. I didn't have a computer in my high in my school at all. The first computer we ever got in our school was my senior year of high school. We got one computer for the school. I, I'm I'm all about. I, I don't like technology. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is, you can't live in a in a box here. You can't you can't just decide or pretend that the technology is such a problem that, that, that we're just not going to use it. Obviously, it's up to interpretation, and everybody's got an opinion, and I'm not saying mine is the right opinion. But here's what I will say. I will go out on a limb to say this, and it's probably going to make some people angry, but I, I still think it needs to be said. Banning, let's say that the pros do decide to ban forward-facing sonar. Great. I'm not a pro. I'll never be a pro. It's never going to affect me at all. But I think it's important to know this is what it's about. It's about young guys with little experience dominating the older, more experienced guys, and they don't like it. And they have a lot of influence, as they rightfully should. They've earned it. I'm not saying they haven't earned it. But it is not about conservation. It is not about fish care. It is not about viewership, trying to make a better product for the viewer. It's not about preserving the fisheries or anything like that. That is not what this is about. What this is about is the young guys who embrace technology, they dominated, and the old guys who don't like it did not, and that's your whole problem. I think this guy here might need to be the poster child for technology. Is he a young guy? No, he's not considered young anymore. Is he old? No, he's not old. He's in the middle now, but he is a dominant angler and what was his approach to this technology he was he was he was sponsored by Lawrence and I think he still is by the way his whole career and he saw that he was getting his butt kicked or he was worried that he was going to get his butt kicked I don't know if there was a period where he really got spanked but let's cuz he's he's not good but he saw the technology out there. He knew he had to use it to compete. So he went and got a Garmin unit. He went and got the uh, Mega Live 360. He got everything he could and put it on his boat, paid for it out of his own pocket. I think that's what he said, even though Lawrence sponsored him. He risked losing his whole Lawrence sponsorship over that, and he was prepared to do that because he realized... I want to be the best, I want to be number one, and I'm going to learn this technology. There are other guys out there who have said, screw that, and I'm one of them. <laughs> I've not embraced it at all on my boat or my kayaks. Do I have it now? Yes, I did buy it last year. Have I used it? I still have not used it. So I am not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the poster child for the FFS, man, I am not. But I am saying that to think that somehow the older guys, it's not fair to the older guys, so the younger guys need to just get in the line and let's do away with that. That's silly thinking, and that's all this is about. I am not going to believe any other argument. You can tell me all you want about 
increasing viewership and protecting fisheries and all this other stuff. That is a smoke screen. That's all that is. Maybe I'll just wrap up by sharing with you this Facebook post that Brian Latimer uh, put out there. He says, in tournament fishing, we fight for rules that fit our personal agenda. Bingo! That is it 100%. And that's not just in tournament fishing. That's in life. That's everywhere. If we don't like something, we try to change it for us. Not for the fishery. Not for conservation. Not for anything else. We do it for us. And that's what this is about. Well said, Brian Latimer. You're spot on. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Please hit that like button. Share the video with others. And until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy forward-facing sonar fishing. Or not.